Welcome back to The Art Cafe, this is episode 99. In this episode, I sat down with Jingna Zhang, a world-renowned photographer, and we spoke about photography in general, a uh, pretty exciting topic for me recently. Um, hope you're gonna enjoy this one. Let's go. That was a year ago or two. Yeah, it was a year think, ago. I think it was three years ago. No, no. Was that with a friend who was driving up along the coast? I was, yeah. wasn't I? Yeah, that, I think that's like three years ago. That was when I did my uh, StarCraft team like reunion. Oh, uh, okay. So that was a while back. Well, that's then, uh, yeah, time is flying way too fast. <laughs> <laughs> A year ago, I'm like, I haven't been to California in a while. Oh my god, what's going on yeah. in my head? <laughs> <laughs> you, you are, you are doing a lot of things. Uh, yeah, I, I maybe, can, yeah. maybe, but yeah, it's the know, same for me. Mm. You know what's what's yeah. funny is, um, I I was always interested in photo. Well, no, not always. I, I was interested in photography for a while, and mm -hmm. uh, I think my my real first DSLR was 5D Mark II. Mm. And, I, and I bought it when I came here. That's when I actually took it like serious enough. Um, <laughs> and then it was I think it was 2015 when we launched the, the Learn Squared, right? And uh -huh. you were you were like yeah. the OG of <laughs> <laughs> like the real OG, one of the first it's, classes that uh, we, I'm so excited to be invited. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's just yeah. like it's, it was awesome. Uh, but I remember I, I took your class and I was your apprentice, yeah. and mm -hmm. I did this uh, this photo shoot. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you, because we were <laughs> we we're going back and forth, and uh, every <laughs> almost everything I planned for, and you were like stressing about in the class. <laughs> make sure you do this. Make sure you do that. Like yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and when it came came the time to do the photo shoot like nothing was working <laughs> that was so funny <laughs> that's, um, that's life yeah <laughs> uh, that's that's every photo shoot <laughs> yeah pretty much huh but mm -hmm. you know i honestly you know i i took down the notes and, and some of the things worked out really well and i had mm -hmm. uh jonathan berubi to help me out a little bit uh as well on his end just like he would just basically repeat what you said in the class it's like make mm -hmm. sure you did this <laughs> And like something I wouldn't do, he would just like bring along as well. So that mm -hmm. kind of saved everything. And I, I remember yeah. I was trying to to do it with like hot lights, but he brought the strobes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we don't yeah. really need strobes. And like, no, nah, I'm gonna take them just in case. <laughs> <laughs> and that basically saved it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, hot hot lights are great, but it's so different to work with for moving pictures and stills. You know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I want to learn about you a little bit more, however. Because mm -hmm. you, you know, so one of the one of the most striking parts about your work is that it looks like a painting a lot of times. You know, I look at some of the covers that you've done before and more <laughs> recently, and and literally uh, a lot of them look like straight up paintings, which is Thank you. crazy. <laughs> And you know, like the 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 illustration or illustration here. See, like I'm, I'm actually just taking it on right now. Um, the the photo you did for uh, for the class itself for Learn Squared, it does mm. look like a you know straight up straight up illustration. So I want to learn like where along the like what got you into the photography in the first mm. place, but mm -hmm. also like you know there's there's like different stories some, some people say yeah uh you know i was always interested you know my parents mm -hmm. helped me out and all that others were like oh, my parents told me so never nice. do it <laughs> <And> <laughs> i can i can understand that <laughs> very well 
<laughs> yeah, so I want to I want to hear your well. story about it. Yeah, where it all started. Uh, uh, that's that's funny. Um, for me, there were a few different components, but、uh, so I've always liked、um, digital art stuff. Like since I was like thirteen, fourteen, I was hanging on CA and like DeviantArt and CG Talk.、Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just since a long time ago, and、um, during that time, I was like a air rifle shooter for Singapore. So I represented the national team, and I went to like Commonwealth Games and World Cup and all these things. And I was doing quite well.、Um, so I did it for a number of years. And when I was around eighteen,、um, I dropped out from my really good、uh, middle school, and I went to art school because、mm-hmm. I figured like、um, I was doing really well in air rifle, and I. Already realized, like I'm never really gonna take this academic route, and I just really want to do like find things I could be passionate about and and、mm-hmm. go do them. But、um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> so so、um, so when I was in school, I did a bunch of really different things.、Uh, I other than air rifle, I, I played go,、um, the the board game, and then、uh, I I did like a little bit of like、uh, robotics stuff, like called micro mouse, and then、uh, I also、uh, uh, just. Spent a lot of time looking at art, right? And、mm-hmm. play, in, and then I played in a band.、Um, then we played these、uh, Japanese rock music covers, and I became like really intrigued by these like visual rock、um, makeup and hair stuff going on with them. Yeah, and that was the first time I sort of realized like photography could be like photography, including like hair, makeup, the whole package, right? Could be something different than what we saw in newspapers, like photojournalistic kind of stuff, you know, or like landscape work. And and I became kind of fascinated by it.、Mm-hmm. So I wanted to go to fashion school to learn how to make costumes. But、um, so I went to learn fashion design. And so during that time, we were like doing foundation year, and、um, in the RFO team, we, we started having like politics, like you know, on like any organizations, and、right. and things became really difficult for me. And Because air rifle was such like a mentally、um, driven sport, so it, I, I guess I wanted to have like an escape. And when I discovered photography from like doing things in school and from like photographing my own like、um, design, like my own clothes and stuff, I realized like I can have so much control over what I do with this work, something I'm like really passionate about and really dedicated about, and. I I can control the outcome and I can control the team I work with and how how I want everything to to come out and I I plan like crazy, <laughs> which you would have known when we、right. took my class. Yeah, so this is like a combination of all these things coming together.、Uh, really, really like drove me towards photography at that at, at that point of time. And because I loved like you know concept art and like CG and like painterly stuff,、um, it, it just came naturally to me that like I wanted to make pictures that would look like a painting, like so I can、mm-hmm. post on DeviantArt, and if people looked at it, they might go like, "Oh, is this like really a photo, or is this a painting?" Like I want people to kind of <laughs> question that, like because I mean now there are more and more people doing this, right? But at that time there was nobody else doing this on the internet, pretty much. Like yeah, hundred percent. That, that's why my work was you know like popular on, on DA, and that really started my career. So. I was driven by this kind of curiosity to see, like, like how far can I go with this, right? Yeah. So that, that's really how I started with photography, and、uh, my parents definitely didn't support it. <laughs> yeah. But so purely out of like frustration I had with like my other work and like just a curiosity for like you know just a medium of creating art. Hmm. Yeah. You know, like there's, I don't know, like when something comes out of passion and you're and you're um. And you're driven towards uh, uh, doing it, then yeah, it's you, you, it's unstoppable, and it's 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 super cool that um uh, that you found it because like your interest in in concept and illustration paired with you know that that drive towards、uh, photography that's that's it just shows you know it's just like、no. pops out of the images.、Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's super fascinating. Um, so you, you did you did you so how did you approach the photography? Uh, did you decide to uh, because you you went to fashion school? Obviously that that、mm-hmm. that helps to understand how fashion works and、mm. uh, all that stuff. But I, I'm curious about the photography itself. Did you yeah? Did you decide to uh get some academic education in it as well, or was it more like? I just gonna learn that stuff and 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 go with it. Yeah, pretty much.、Uh, never.、Uh, I did think about studying it because、um, uh, I I did 
go to like a, one of those like vocational school and do like a short course with uh, uh, on hair and makeup. Just, just this was before I picked up photography. Uh, I just wanted to like be part of like image creation. And I thought like mm-hmm. aside from making making clothes or something, like I could be a makeup artist or I can be a hairstylist. I, I didn't really know any of that. So I took that course and, and that also helped me early on when I first picked up photography. Mm-hmm. So, so it was completely like, uh, try and error and uh, just uh, out of out of interest. So with photography, when when it came along and I couldn't really find models, I, I would just like ask ask classmates um, of mine uh, in school or um, photograph like my sister or do self portraits, and then just go along from there to try to figure out um, how how I can make do with what I have. I, I think that was like uh, the primary like. Uh, kind of driving premise in what I what I did for a long time. Yeah, so basically more or less self taught in, in, in yeah. that regard. I, I did I did assist one or two photographers like one or two times for fun. Like they, they don't do fashion uh, at all. It's like completely different type of like people portrait or concept portrait stuff and just uh, purely like thought that their work were interesting and, and they ter- they ended up being really helpful to me or in- like either introduced people or just gave me good advice uh, when, when I had like commercial work and how much to quote for stuff. So mm, I, I, th- I think assisting people, whether it's in like, even in the same um, kind of industry or not, right? If you have interest, I feel like it always comes back and, and help you out in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to me, uh, photography is, is the same. I know there are like f- special school, oh, special schools. That sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there, there are schools dedicated towards yeah. learning the craft. But mm-hmm. I'm curious, like, what's your what's your uh, take on it? I mean, we obviously we can be as politically correct uh, on this as, mm-hmm. as as we want. Uh, to me, like, I'll, I'll be open about uh, art schools specifically. Uh, except very few, um, very few examples, <laughs> let's put mm-hmm. it this way, where you can get um, good education, but it's going to cost mm-hmm. you a leg and a, and a liver. Mm-hmm. There is mm-hmm. literally no schools uh, in the world that, that do a decent job. I, I, again, very few that cost a lot of money. And arguably, you could, you could be better off not going there at all, you know? <laughs> I wonder if it's uh, similar with photography in in that in that case. If there are like, you know, almost like a mm. cornerstone uh, locations where, okay, if you go to that place, you, you can gar- guarantee mm. you're gonna be getting like really good education from like actual professionals, mm. versus uh, I don't know taking seminars or workshops yeah. with with popular. I, photographers. I think. Yeah, I think it has to be it's similar as concept art. It has to be like the best schools only in the biggest cities, like you know, like fashion cities, New York or or London. Mm-hmm. And um, and then you would have like you know uh, maybe visiting speakers or your school would set you up with mentors that's like in the industry. And right. for your grad show, you would have press from like all the really good magazines that would come and you know look look at your work and. I, I know a lot of people who go to go s- those schools get started that way mm-hmm. because the school has such a strong network um, and, and they would do those kind of networking for you when, when you don't know anything. Um, but uh, And I think the same can be for concept art, although I feel like people, before they go to school, they would have already spent a lot of time online and, and made friends. Uh, right. Like you, can, you can get some good connections out of it, pro- probably. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it depends. Like, I know a couple of friends that went to some of the questionable <laughs> art schools <laughs> and uh, they would meet, um, <laughs> they would meet, you know, someone who's from the outside, let's put it this yeah. way, who works in the industry and, mm. and then like, hey, what do you think? It's like, leave. <laughs> 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 like, don't waste your time. Uh, uh, I think I had Nick Jindra, who is right now, he's working on Avatar sequels, and he, mm. I can't remember which which art school he was going to, but he mm. met Shadi Safadi, and Shadi oh. was basically like, hey, like, have you ever looked at, I, I think back then was CG Hub, and, mm. and you know, I guess DeviantArt, have you ever looked at work that people post there? And he was like, no. So go and check and then compare oh, your crazy. works your works to to it because then you'll get like um like a good good idea of what's going on in the world of like production art. Mm. 
Yeah. Uh, and it'll, it'll give you like uh, a good measurement whether you're spending your time correctly in this uh, facility or not, you know? And he was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, and even back then, when you look on CJ Hub and, and DA, it's just, it's just so much, so much of this stuff you would easily see are, it's all marketing art. Like, so many mm -hmm. people don't have like any concept of what you actually do in production, right? And I really think, you know, people like you and what we do on Learn Squared and a lot of other courses and people teaching out there now, I think they, they discuss it more, which I think is really amazing because back in the days, it's just like, nobody has good concept <laughs> of what's going on. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, when I was, when I was picking up concept art, it was only Noman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously you have oh, yeah. Yeah. Art Center yeah, in yeah, those there places, used to be the but... Place yeah. But I, I, I like, here's the, here's the point that I'm trying to make, I guess. You know, when I was learning, I was so poor, like so <laughs> poor. Uh, and even like, even stuff like Noman DVDs was like 60 mm. bucks, but, but then shipping as well from, from US to, <laughs> to Poland. So like, I got to uh. boot like that stuff, you know, um, it was too expensive and I cannot yeah. imagine, you know, if you want to go to art center, you, you you're kind of forced it's to be, insane. well, you have to be American to be, uh, to be there in the first place. It's right. so expensive, so expensive. Yeah. And even back, like back then, I think it was worth more because there was like no other alternative to learn like quality content. Cause there was almost mm -hmm. none. Yeah. Um, Noman was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Noman was like the only place I guess that was doing it online. Um, yeah. but if you were like working yourself hard enough and and finding those mentors online back then then mm -hmm. you would get by and that's how i actually got my sort of quote-unquote personal education in in mm. art you know I was... you can learn so much online can't you just like yeah by posting your stuff on like ca and going through the critic threads like look at the sketchbooks of people like oh my god i feel so nostalgic right now so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah guess, so I guess it's the same photo for photography as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I used to post my stuff on, on forums and stuff. And um, mm -hmm. I, it, it's, I, don't know, it, I definitely like made some early photography friends that way. Uh, and and it's, it's nice to just um, see what people are saying. But I, I think for myself, because I'm very self-critical, so it's right. just always like... Like my critic is probably good enough for me to feel bad about my work long enough, <laughs> and that I just keep working on it some more. Like always hating on your on your own uh, work. I'm always is is like an endless amount of hating. It's, it, it never stops. <laughs> yeah, it's like, especially when I'm like retouching, like, oh, why didn't I fix this? Like while I was doing the photo shoot, oh my god, I spent so long on this shot. Like why didn't I just do this from like another angle? It would have been so much cooler. <laughs> it's like all so many questions goes through my head and. Uh, and, and even though it's like apples to oranges or apples to watermelons, I will look at my art friends and be like, oh my God, they're so good. And they're like doing all these like, you know, interesting stuff. And like my, my work is trash. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, like, it's kind of unfair to compare yourself to like, like photography to CG, because yeah. like, especially with, with what the, the kind of work that you're doing the most, which is like portrait, portrait photography mm -hmm. in most cases. Like you have to mm. prepare for it so much, like get get in that place. You, you cannot just like once you leave and you're done with the photo shoot, you cannot be like, oh, oh you know what? Like I forgot. Like a day <laughs> later, I forgot. Let's just uh, reshoot. Like that <laughs> just just takes so much time, right? Whereas with, yeah. with concept, you're like, you just open the Photoshop file and just change it. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Mean? Yeah. 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 It's a little no, unfair. But, but I think, <laughs> uh, yeah. But um, yeah, that that was something I I, I had to I guess keep working on um mm -hmm. so like at the same time i could see like my work getting better and i was proud of like certain aspects of it like you know i i had like a unique style and unique voice and i was doing something different but at the same time it's just like oh, why is it better like so frustrating there's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that yeah would you ever find your work like when you did the work that had to be done Mm -hmm. And obviously, once you're like editing and preparing, doing the pre-production and then doing the photo shoot, and then, you know, I guess once you're done with photo shoot, you're, you're, you're kind of aware more or less what you're looking at. But then mm -hmm. until you get to editing, you can't really tell for, for sure, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But would you find, like, how often you, would you find that you're sort of like happy with the results for now? And then like literally maybe 
a week or a few days later, you would be like, oh, I should have done it better. <laughs> all, all the time, all the time. It, so, sometimes, um, especially when I'm trying like a new concept or a new approach. So when I'm shooting, I will be like so extremely excited. Like, oh my God, this is like, especially when it goes well, like this is exactly what I wanted. This is so cool and this is so fun. Um, and oh my God, it looks so good. And then after the shoot, I'll just be like, it, it, it just looks mediocre. What, what was I so excited about? It's, it looks normal. Like, I'm just so stupid. I can't even find like one picture to five star. Like, I, I start having these kind of feelings. Like, so, so it's, so that comes to be something uh, really important in my process. So I don't, I almost never choose like a final picture on the day of the photo shoot. <laughs> I, right. I let it sit for like a few days be before like the excitement like can, you know, just like wear off on its own and then I come back and look at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With a, with a more critical eye yeah yeah that's interesting yeah. actually like taking a little bit of time off um and then getting back to it so it's like mm. you're, you're approaching it with more fresh mind i guess and an unbiased yeah. excitement yeah because i think in in the process of creation on a ra very rapid pace it, it's easy for us to be a bit like distracted by the new things we're doing Mm -hmm. that that that's just like really shiny and and seems really cool but may, maybe you're missing out on certain other elements that you know that's like usually more signature to your work or you might be getting yeah. right 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 yeah it's um it's fascinating it's fascinating like i guess a good good way to compare it would be looking at uh sketches you know like when you do a sketch yeah i think work. so yeah, I, yeah. I think it's really easy to like look at a lot, a, like a large number of sketches and just feel like really impressed and like all things look really cool. But like mm. sometimes looseness lends to it and, and the way you render it out also changes stuff, right? So, yeah. Um, and, and the more you paint it in, sometimes like, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like the sketch. Was. Yeah, you know what? Right on the button. Because it's like <laughs> uh, many times I would, I would send out like not only for clients, Mostly, mm -hmm. mostly for myself, when I would do a sketch uh, and then finish it, and they're like, ah, I kind of like the sketch more. But I found my <laughs> find, found that like sometimes doing work for clients, I would send a couple of sketches, and they're mm. like, holy crap, it looks all awesome. Let's do it. like let's, <laughs> let's let's take this one and just like bring it home. And as I'm trying to render it out, it's like this was not the best choice. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not when it's the best choice or not. But uh -huh. like every single detail I would add would be like, oh, it's now it's losing that magic. Yeah, I felt the same when, when I, yeah, when I took that class too, because some of them we we worked with like the the generated plate that you did, and then we we, we mm -hmm. painted over them, or we took our own scenes and painted over the three D. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, scene that we made and after a while it's just like it's just it's just not <laughs> it's just losing <laughs> yeah i know the feeling of frustration is quite similar yeah oh you know i'll, I'll tell you i mean I've, I've i've said it before but you know because you were for those who are listening you were yeah. my apprentice on that class as well mm -hmm. that was the i think it was the uh, intro to uh, environment painting yeah um yeah. and yeah i remember you 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 did really well like considering like you've never done concept <laughs> art ever you know i mean you, you've dabbled a bit with like tablet and whatnot but never to a point where we're like oh let's make an illustration um, um so it was very fun it, it was it was such a good class um because we we have you know foundation drawing classes in art school and mm -hmm. and like nobody taught us like just basic things on how to like you know sketch out perspective lines with a reference and it was just like blew my mind like <laughs> i can draw i can draw this with a reference oh my god genius <laughs> it felt Mateo's so easy genius. huh and you can, like, no no your, your, teaching, <laughs> your teaching was so amazing yeah no no your teaching was so amazing and because because i've gone throughout school so i knew i i, I would like oh i just can't draw i just can't compare with the people who've been like always good at drawing and look at these other classmates who are good at it so when, when I could produce the kind of work that, that I did after taking our classes um, and just like learning new skill sets and stuff, mm -hmm. that, that was really interesting to me. And that was really, um, that really like brought back a bit of the growth mindset into me as well. Just like, you know, like keep in mind, like there are things that I thought I can't do, like that I should go and learn it and, and maybe I, I can try. It. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Really, really good class. Did you find anything in it like, that you would like? later on like oh this approach was kind of interesting or those aspects of it were kind of interesting or it would just like cross pollinate to your work or 
Um, on a very basic level, I became a bit less afraid to like paint in certain elements in into my mm. work, um, especially right after the class. Like I, I um, used a, a little bit more sometimes of like just using like uh, painterly strokes to just like do it in the background, like give it a wash and just give it some like texture that that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Or um, I did like uh, one or two portraits that were like um, felt more like vignettes, where I kind of just faded the bust of the the model in into like the background. And right. it was like fun to experiment. Yeah, yeah. Before I just wouldn't even have thought about it. But now I'm like, you know, I, I'm just going to try it. Yeah, so. Yeah, I guess at the um, end of the day, it's just art, you know? Yeah, and the mediums cross over, right? So mm -hmm. it was definitely very fun. Right? Yeah, I, I, with that in mind, I actually have a question. Because, you mm -hmm. know, I remember, I remember those early days of concept art. And back then, yeah. there, was, there was this idea that if if you use photography in any of your paintings, then that means you're cheating. You know, mm -hmm. you're like you're a cheater. Uh, you didn't paint that. Oh, did you use round brush? No, like, well, that's cheating. Um, and I. <laughs> did you download Jamie? Did you download art pad brushes? That's cheating. And um, yeah. and I'll tell you, like, uh, many times, especially when I started dabbling with photography. And mm -hmm. like going on forums and reading like different different opinions, like not only just searching for gear, but but generally, yeah. you know, if someone would post something and then you, you could tell it was it was edited, you know, edited results, mm -hmm. you would mm -hmm. get those comments of like, oh, that's cheating, like you're editing, <laughs> like that's not the real photo. Yeah. It's like, w w what's your take on this? I think. Um... Because we, we have both lived through the period, right? Uh, you've really seen people's um, opinion on it change more over time. But it, it was, re I, I definitely was, um, uh, definitely I can understand the feeling of people who were not doing things professionally where they felt like uh, there's just like a purist aspect to, to, towards the, the love of this art that they have, that they want to see it being preserved that way. So it's like, oh, if it's photography, like if you've never done darkroom, are you really a photographer? You know, there's like all these kind of things. And I'm like, yeah, I've been digital all the way. And I, I did like, you know, uh, like I tried, like properly developed uh, a film pretty much only once and someone else did the darkroom for me. <laughs> so, yeah. um, uh, but I think that that has no merit on the final work that you create, right? You, you can give it a name, like it's photography or it's a painting or it's a mixed media art, but ultimately it is an artwork that you're presenting. Like it's a little bit different when you come to things like um, photojournalism, where the integrity of the piece is really important. But uh, yeah, but that's that's like a different argument altogether because the, the moment as an as a creator, you frame the shot, even if nothing was changed, you, you are framing it from your perspective. Um, yeah, that's but, correct. That's correct. Um, but I, I definitely like I saw a lot of that, and I think people need to realize, and I think more people definitely realize it now that it's okay to like photo bash, it's okay to use a reference. But um, coming from the photography side, obviously, because we have taken time to you know craft this image, like choose the lighting, wait out the time, um, uh, do the color balance, pick the model, like create every single element of this, right? Even though we didn't paint it from scratch, we did. We mm -hmm. made all these artistic. Positions. So when someone does reference a picture um, and don't credit the original photographer, that, that does suck to me. So I feel like if people are doing studies, they, they should always, like, you know, um, yeah, like kind of like mention. Yeah, so, so that would take stuff. me off when I was doing photography and I would see like really good artists. They just paint something that's like either a paint over or a complete direct reference and they just never credit the original photo. And like, that's, mm -hmm. that's shitty. Yeah, but overall, I think, you know, if it's a study, if it saves time, if it does the job, um, why not? A lot of times people do photo bashing stuff because it's in production art and you need speed and that's what you got to deliver, right? Yeah. Um, and then if you're doing a study, then sure, go like copy for <laughs> all it's worth. I, I think you can learn so much from trying to copy something and realize like how hard it is or um, look at it from like a more critical point of view now that you're copying it. Like, oh, I would have done this differently. So I think it's a good thought experiment exercise to copy. Yeah, for but, sure. Um, when it comes to really original work, I know, um, like a lot of artists, while they use references, they'll make their own, right? They'll go out and like take like landscape shots and they'll like use themselves or their friends as models so they can like, you know, paint something like completely original and uh, as the way they need it. I think, I think that's like a great way to work. Yeah. I imagine that if, if you're taking references or like literally using 
photography as as a texture uh mm. I, I i feel like as long i might be wrong on this completely wrong but mm -hmm. as yeah, as long as you are in a way heavily editing to a point where it's completely becomes, transforming it, yeah like yeah. completely transforming where it becomes complete complete derivative then mm. then that's fine because like you know to, to that to that same degree you, you could you could argue that all of the music that is out there pretty much all of it is a copy of something right uh, yeah most of the modern musicians outside of those who are actually using real instruments <laughs> would just <laughs> sample uh sample and sample pretty much everything that that has done has been done before and then just mm -hmm. edit that um you know so like to my perspective would be yeah like let's say if, if someone made a landscape photo and like oh like i really like that 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 part of the sky where the clouds are mm -hmm. looking awesome and i'll take that and use in my painting and then over paint to make it fit towards where the painting is but it's so edited that you, you if you would pair the painting and uh, the photo side by side you would mm -hmm. say like oh th those are completely two different kinds of work then honestly I'm, like yeah like who can even tell <laughs> that's exactly fine. That, yeah. that's that's fine and you know as you oh. said in production environment when you're working with clients like it's very difficult to basically make everything fr from scratch because that's that's almost mm -hmm. almost impossible uh i found it more more of a case when you work in films where everything has to be done so quickly that mm -hmm. that you know it's a it's a pretty much a disregard whether whether it's uh whether you're you're taking st straight from reference or not as long mm -hmm. as it's serving the purpose uh as long as it doesn't go into the final work <laughs> right but question yeah yeah and i agree with you on that like uh I, I guess i guess then it's your your personal choice and decision um what are you gonna do with this because like if, if you're doing a concept for a film right and that's just mm -hmm. a production art that, that has to deliver an idea that director has Mm -hmm. that's not what's going to be on the screen what's going to be on the screen yeah. is someone taking then that and the completely deriving it into a vfx and filming and yeah and that be, by exactly. itself becomes original work right mm -hmm. so it's referring yeah. to something that was done before yeah but it's, then it's you, pretty much mm -hmm. what we do uh without photography like when we do mood boards right when we do a pitch deck yeah it's correct. same thing and we just use a collection of uh photos mostly photography sometimes like pick illustrations or sketches as well but mostly mm -hmm. photos like you know oh this is the mood this is the makeup right like it's just a collection of them yeah but then i guess it would be similar to like if, if if you took a reference and then just edited it slightly and said that's your work it would be like almost mm -hmm. taking a mood mood board and saying like oh look what i did <laughs> 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 Yeah, uh, no, that's in a similar yeah. fashion, I guess. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's fascinating. It's pretty interesting. Um, let me ask you this: uh, mm -hmm. so you, we established that you've pretty much learned on your own, and and you work with a couple of photographers that always uh, always helps, like having a mentor to actually see how they work and kind of learn from that. Mm. That's 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 great. Uh, when was when when it became like really serious, meaning? uh you actually took it from this is my hobby i love doing that towards oh i'm actually now making a living out of out of that uh, work um i would say it was about a year after i started photography mm -hmm. so um so i started and yeah so i started posting my work on the internet on dvnr and all that stuff and uh, locally, um, when I was still living in Singapore, I, I made some friends and I started photographing like models that were with like model agencies. And um, I I was still in fashion school at this time, but I I had a fight with a classmate in school <laughs> one day um, because I was like uh, competing overseas for, for a lot of the time and I was like missing classes and, mm -hmm. and someone was just really unhappy that the teachers weren't because our teachers were could be quite mean, right? You know, sometimes right. in our school they just yell at you all the time, uh, and the teachers were a bit nicer to me, and and they were like, "You didn't even do your homework. It doesn't matter. You were like overseas or representing Singapore." I'm like, "Like, what, what fucking logic is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I have no idea where they're getting. I mean, they got scolded, so obviously they were mad. But like, mm -hmm. wrong person, right? Wrong target." And around that time, I've been thinking about taking a year off from school to like focus on photography because I, I really grew to like it and I want to spend more time because I was shooting full time. I was 
going to school full time, and and I was also doing photography, so I, I had very little time for it. Mm-hmm. And and I thought about taking a year off, but like after that fight, I'm just like, why do I bother coming back to this environment? You know, like like my art school was not a good school. <laughs> Right, right. So, so I, I was just like, you know, I'm done here. So I decided to quit school, and I kind of just expedited the the process to go pro. Pretty much, um, I had some interest from online for like really, really small jobs. Um, and uh, at that time, there was a big photo, like a um, photo as well as TVC production company in Singapore. Mm-hmm. Uh, pr- primarily photo, and they had an assist, like they had an assistant applicant who used my work in their portfolio. Oh. But one of the other one of the other photographers on on the team was like, he used to be in music. He's like, wait, I I know this girl from music. Like, uh, this is not this guy's work. <laughs> Singapore is so small, right? right? And my work was a bit popular on DeviantArt. Um, it was one of my popular pictures. So so that guy got called out, and and they told me about it. I'm like, oh well, since you guys are hiring, <laughs> want to hire the one who actually <laughs> made that? So. Because this will be the second time I quit school, and um, I, I would like to have something to tell my mom. Like, you know, I'm not going to be jobless for life. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, uh, so, so that was like my first gig um, out of school to be like a junior photographer slash assistant, and uh, mm-hmm. I lasted a month. <laughs> it was just a thing to tell my mom, um, and then but I, I started freelancing from there. Yeah. So it was just like, just life circumstances just happened, and then I just I just went into it. I'm just like, I, I guess I always like to think about what's the worst case scenario uh, when I take a risk and then mm. if it looks like it won't be too bad I, I would do it right so right. Um, I already knew like if you do like a one day one day photography for a photo shoot for a magazine you could get paid about eight hundred dollars Singapore dollars that's about like 600 US dollars probably mm-hmm. and um, if I can do two shoots uh, in one month that is the same as like a fresh university graduate salary at, at that time I mean now it's higher so I thought, like, that's not too bad. I can, like, how hard is it to get two photo shoots a, a month, right? If I, I try really hard, I, 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 there must be a chance for me. So, like, that was my worst case scenario. And then, so I, I quit school and I quit my Arapo team and I just started shooting, yeah, photography. That's perfect. <laughs> so, like, that, that sort of a, a lucky moment, let's put it this way. Um, yeah, just, again, just push me into it. Yeah, really. Um, I, I, I've used to say like a little bit of luck and I've mentioned this on, on I think on, even on my previous podcast that like the mm-hmm. luck is more of um, spotting the opportunity that presents itself in front of you but yes. being, being prepared for it as well. That's yeah. where the, and the luck is coming from. I think from. there is this this advice that, that goes around quite a bit is that you will never feel prepared to do something so you should always go do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. When, when the opportunity comes out you should always go do it. It, it's it, it's been like I've had a few instances of that in my life where I'm like now we're definitely not ready to do this but it came up and people kind of like you know you, you go with the flow people are like you should try it anyway and, and you go and then you realize like it really starts escalating from there you're like a completely different world and you just start and you go yeah I think that's really important too mm-hmm. don't let the like lack of readiness like you know like hold you back I think that's yeah it's not like you're you're preparing yourself for something to happen and then just wait for it to happen like you have to actually go a little bit above that and and try yeah. to make things happen by your by, by your own you know yeah. purview um yeah. but but at least you know when when the moment happens because those moments mm-hmm. happen every now and then you will spot it because you're gonna be ready yeah for it and, um, and everything happens progressively and and there's always like a learning curve and and time mm-hmm. that takes to to grow to that right i think that's that's why a lot of times people feel like they're not prepared because their work is not there yet but like all the people that we see are there like took time to get there yeah like they, they were not there in like one day right they they took like you know small steps or you know a, a newcomer step to 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 be on that platform mm-hmm. so, yeah, so yeah everything seems to be ever changing but but for a good reason meaning mm-hmm. like uh Let's say if you see a project that you're not prepared for, you know, sometimes it's a good call not to take take a uh, take on it mm. because you might just not be completely ready. Mm-hmm. And that but sometimes actually... you should really do it. <laughs> exactly. Right. So sometimes yeah. like, let's not do it because that's ju- I'm just going to burn doing that. And, mm-hmm. and that's just going to make a huge disappointment, not only for a client or whatever, whatever. Right. Mm. Uh, and I'm not going to learn anything, anything because I'm just like completely unprepared. Uh, it's yeah. like, hey, let me run a marathon, being like three hundred pounds and never, never, <laughs> never making any run yeah. ever, right? That's 
Yeah. That's, I, I guess a good co- compare, good way to compare. I was yeah. pretty heavy when I was a couple of years ago, so I can say about about that a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, just just <laughs> okay. putting that disclaimer. Um, but but yeah, sometimes like I might not be completely ready, but if I if I you know strap in myself and like really mm. really push and really focus forward, you know I can I can uh, overcome those uh, inabilities that I have right now and learn them all yeah. to go. You know. Yeah, yeah, you and know. and sometimes it's just so worth it, right? Um, I, I think it's important if it's something that you've always wanted to do and you've had interest. Mm-hmm. Right? I think that's like a big big mark of it yeah like i know there was a very well established uh, photographer in singapore he was telling us this story where uh he's he's always loved cars but um car photography is like a completely different beast than like people photography and like right. fashion and portrait which is what he does so so when there was once he was asked to do like a car shoot and and they're like do you want to do it and he's like yeah i'm gonna do it and and he basically just you know hit up like the all the car dealers for like uh, the super sports cars in Singapore and like offered to do photography for free and just like like let me do what I want and all that stuff and and just like practiced before mm-hmm. he got that big job like you know so you promise it and then you research and you prepare it and I think it'll be fine yeah I guess it would be different if you were like oh let's let's just wing it <laughs> yeah it came yeah on no, sale, like, like oh obviously what's going don't on do that. <laughs> yeah that's just dumb <laughs> yeah 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 uh, it's kind of it's kind of crazy because like. The more I learn about photography, um, I realize, you know, you have those different fields like, you know, you have uh, landscape, uh, portrait, Mm. you know, Mm -hmm. sports, uh, cars, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. macro. There's just so many different, and and like every field. Very, very different. Super different, but yet they're all using the same tool, you know? Yeah. Which you is know, crazy. it's a bit like you can be a two D artist or a three D artist and still use the same tech. Doesn't true, mean you're true. doing yeah, the exact good, same I guess thing. a good way to compare. Yeah, uh, but I, I, you know, to that point, it gives you it, it, that saying that it, the tool is just a tool. Uh, yeah, it really becomes is. like really meaningful as you compare it to you know different crafts that are vastly different. They have different fields, but they all kind of tend to use the same thing. Uh, at the mm. end of the day, there's like always an anchor point that all of those crafts are sort of like related to whatever that would mm. be Cintiq or just just having a computer, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, like... that's that's cool. How many um, how many photo shoots you you normally do in a year? Like on on average, I, I know like I guess uh... I guess it comes down to like every year is different because yeah, all it, depends. I, like I do less and less do. every year. <laughs> So when I first started, I was so hardworking. Um, it's good to be young. <laughs> right. I was 20 years old, right? Uh, I, I would do like 90 photo shoots a year, like mm-hmm. for the first two years. And, and that's like a very high turnover because I was doing my own retouching and I put together all the shoots and all that stuff. Um, so that was a lot, way too much. And then I, after a few years, it came down to around like between like 40 to 50. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... In the last few years, I think around 30 a year is, a, is a, about a range I do it at. So it's like a mix of like personal work and then uh, very right. few commercial, like just a few commercial jobs so that I can pay my rent. Um, and uh, majority would be uh, magazine stuff, which doesn't pay much, but it's good for your resume because um, I need it for my visa. And uh, uh, m- mostly just personal work and self-learning. Yes. Right, 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 right. So, so uh, yeah, I guess you started with like, as many as I can. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, scale it down to that, I guess, yeah. one or two a month. Um, I mean, the, the longer I shoot, the harder... Not the harder, I guess, the more detailed that my plans become as well. Mm-hmm. So that definitely yeah. play a factor. Like, back, back then, it's just like, oh, I think it would be tr- cool to try doing this makeup. Then it's just the makeup artist's job to, like, do what I asked, right? Like, I don't have to prepare for anything. I just rent the studio. But now I'm like, oh, I want to try this makeup and I want to have this material. Does the makeup artist have it? Oh, no, I have to get it and I want to try this. Like, like now there's a lot more to all these elements that I'm putting mm-hmm. together, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess like over time, it's... it's um, I, would, I wish I could tell that. You, you, I could say exactly the same thing about art because it's like, it's, it's actually the opposite. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but I guess like over time, as you're doing more and more photo shoots, you realize where your abilities are landing at and what, what things you can learn and then what kind of preparations you can do to actually 
make the next one, the next job, whether it would be, uh, uh, you know, personal or professional work, more detailed, more unique, and, uh, you know, more, I guess, more technically advanced, which means that you have to spend a little more time uh, to prepare for it, but then also mm. because you have so much more experience, so much more um, uh, photography in your resume and clients you worked with, also the budgets become better over time, I'm, I'm guessing. Mm. Hmm, debatable. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, magazine work uh, has always been bad, um, un unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually better. Well, it really depends from like city to city. Right. New York is really a place where um, I guess it's very easy to exploit um, creatives, like in terms of like art and fashion, just because so many people try to get into it. So there are just right, like so many of us who are so willing to shoot I guess. for a magazine for free. Yeah, mm -hmm. in Singapore, if you're not going to pay, then well, I'm not going to shoot for you, and you only have two good photographers in Singapore. Mm -hmm. well, more than that, but you know that that's the idea. So of course, there's like a proper day rate and all that stuff. I mean, like you know, proper magazines like U.S. Vogue and Harper's are obviously they're, they're going to pay you properly, but um, there's like you right. know. Like probably like twenty thousand photographers in New York City or something, and what are they gonna shoot? Right, it's like indie magazines. There's international editions of mm -hmm. like Vogue or Harper's Bazaar that's gonna shoot in New York City, and they they don't have the money. Like they could be from any country where like a hundred dollars is like their monthly salary, right? Right. But photographers want to have Vogue on their portfolio, of course. So like no one is gonna charge anything for it, and we all pay out of pocket. So mm -hmm. it's like a it's kind of a job of privilege. You need to have like gotten far enough in your career where you can sustain it with your commercial jobs or come from like a well-to-do family. You can sustain that for you to keep shooting, really. It's just mm -hmm. really expensive, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, like once you start getting into gear, it's, uh, oh my God, it can, <laughs> it can get out of hand real quick. <laughs> I understand you are really <laughs> uh yeah i'm like a little bit obsessive about it i you know by here's here, uh, the one part of, i like about it is that you know, i'm trying to be as as reasonable as possible <laughs> it's my hobby at the end of the day mm -hmm. but i've noticed that even even you know whether i i took your class and did and did a photo shoot uh I've learned sort of like what goes down when you are actually trying to organize a group of people and and make a project like that and then i remember shortly after I was actually on the set of Ghost in the Shell, and I saw like, oh, this mm. is how big production looks like. I had yeah, problems with the insane. with the group of three people. I cannot even <laughs> imagine how they are doing this with with fifty people, and one of those oh. lights is more expensive than my entire house. You know, <laughs> um, so so, but but there was always oh. this learning process that that was cross pollinating towards my my personal work, or or even mm. just just generally uh, artwork, because you know the mm. more I've learned about how shutter speeds work. Uh, and you know different kind of lenses the more I start paying attention to what kind of references I'm looking at and if I'm mm. doing if I'm using textures or stock photography for um, for my work or even if, yeah. I, if I go and shoot uh, then you know I'm more more curious about what kind of uh, angle of view I, I I'll be looking at mm. just to support my work specifically because it's so easy just to pick something and slap it in and but if you're using like different lenses yeah. different light directions it's just gonna be out of place right uh, yeah so, so small things like that they, they seem to be insignificant but they do yeah. affect uh, the way you know uh the way I that, work. that's that's really cool yeah it, it's the same for me like you know i was we were i was we were trying to uh i was learning how to paint environment from your class um, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I would, you know, before I hand in my homework and do the call with you, I would like ask Toby to look at it a lot. My roommate, concept artist, <laughs> and uh, like he, he, he would like he would nitpick like two thousand things, and and I would just learn all these things that we don't commonly talk about, right? When we talk about our right. or our work, and it's like, oh, there's like atmosphere fog over there, and you need to like lighten up the thing, and this is like I just take a photo as it is. I never really think about it, right? Yeah. And and this can play into different ways I can like in the future like manipulate like certain ways to create a set or uh, to it, do post processing on, on a picture so so that was like cross pointing into my work too and it was, it was very, very interesting yeah it's pretty yeah. awesome I'm, I'm happy to hear that <laughs> <laughs> obviously yeah gear is gear is a subject that if we jumped into it I think it would take us two hours to, <laughs> to digest <laughs> everything it's so crazy uh, you know I'm now on that that role of like looking into vintage lenses and oh you know, exciting i'm trying to be very very 
cautious because it just the, the costs skyrocket so I, I try to do it in a way where I, I test it out first you know whatever even even if I buy it I just I just test it if it if it, if it fits yeah. to what I know it's gonna work for me then mm -hmm. I'll keep it if not then I, there's no reason for, <laughs> no reason for it whatsoever and it's kind of interesting because like over time also as you as you do photography you kind of learn mm -hmm. where what's your sort of like field of interest uh, yeah uh, you know uh, is at the most like I've I found mm -hmm. myself that the longer the lens the better <laughs> like mm. i like i like really like that telephoto range the most and, and most me too. Shoots, uh I, I went out to do to do to do them like i would take my 2470 i would take my my fast primes on the on mm -hmm. the on the wider angle end, uh, mm -hmm. end and i would never mm. use them you know <laughs> so i'm like right yeah, in, it, in the process right now where it's funny yeah i want to find like, i only maybe, start, yeah yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, uh, I actually only learned to start using uh, wide angle lenses in, in the last like three or four years too. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in the past, like I, I had a wider lenses in my kit, but I've always just 7200. That's pretty much I, I shoot everything <laughs> with it for like 10 years. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's too awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, especially I think because part of it is like, um, uh, I, I used to talk to this uh, illustrator concept artist friend of mine, um, Noah KH. Uh, so I, I used to ask like, oh, how come you don't do your environment stuff with like, you know, this really wide angle look to it where, where people really love, right? Like mm -hmm. you never have any of that in your portfolio and it's, you know, it's trendy, looks cool. So he likes really like a flat perspective, like long lens type of feeling and it's, it's just very flat. And he's like, well, it, it's more illustrative this way, right? And right. so it's like something that always like stuck with me and because I, I wanted things to be illustrative and flatter. So so when when I was doing more and more photography, I, I just ended up like sticking with the long lens the whole time too. Yeah. It was like friends influencing each other like this. It was like, quite, quite fascinating to me. I guess it grows on you over time. Like, and then mm -hmm. you find, you know, once you establish that, that part that you really love doing, then eventually you start to, to experiment and see what are the other avenues that that might yeah. might be an interest uh be interesting for me you know um, yeah yeah it's fascinating like we could go on and on <laughs> on this um yeah let me let me ask you like maybe a few more questions real quick and then we can wrap it mm -hmm. up um one would be so it, it was it, it was kind of interesting when you said that you know it's it's not that easy to well a first go into a photography and i, I feel mm. like it's such a saturated um saturated you know industry but but i, I, mm. could, I could say the same about about concept art right mm. now as well i'm like, sure if you go on yeah. art station you, you will see there's just so many people like holy yeah hell. um but i i have a, this i have this question instead mm -hmm. because i i you know one thing i've noticed over i don't know past I guess 20 years of, of being mm. almost uh, yeah almost 20 years of being in this yeah. industry uh, that's crazy i've noticed that up to a certain point it's extremely difficult like you are basically like on the lower end of the industry you know trying to spin the spin the wheel the wheels mm. and, and get get by and then mm. eventually once you reach certain quality of work Mm. then you're at that level where people start reaching out to you and then everything becomes significantly easier although it's still not you mm. know it's not the easiest uh, in the world you can still yeah there's just millions of aspects that go into like whether you're going to be financially successful doing that or not right obviously mm. uh, i wonder if it's the same if, if you've noticed it's the same in photography um i think one good thing about photography um, is that there's a lot of one-off opportunities with, with magazines, with, with, with clients, with all sorts of work, unlike concept art. Like the shortest you can get is like on, on a movie project and, and that's, that's really hard to get into, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so most projects are like, you know, you have, you have games and you, you, you have um, TV series or, or, or anything that's like, everything is, is long running. I, I feel like it's, it's definitely a lot harder to break into but photography is like you can if you catch the attention of like uh one editor out of like a hundred that you sent your work to and then um in one issue out of their 12 in a year they have 
some a theme that is like pl- possibly like suits your stuff, you mm-hmm. can do a photo shoot for them. And if you don't have that opportunity, maybe they send you to someone else to have a small photo shoot. They need a portrait right. photographer, and you are sent off to do like one portrait photo of something. Like when I was young, I like my first two years, I did like all sorts of stuff. I did like men's magazines. I did like food photography for like a <laughs> Malay magazine. I, I did like a uh, like. A, different Malay celebrities and like personalities for their like um, uh, culture magazine. It's just like, like very, very different things from what I like right. primarily can do and want to do. But, but it was all like, it, it gets your foot in the door, it pays the bills. And, and if you can sustain a good relationship, it, it can become a recurring thing. Mm-hmm. But for concept art, that is so much harder to get something like that because the demand for just like uh, one-off illustration or concept design, that, that's like, so rare you know if someone asks yeah. for a one-off concept design it's probably for their like self-made novel and you probably get 50 dollars, right um, yeah, can, <laughs> you, you, know, you, you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean um so that's really hard i think photography has a bit more opportunity but of course mm-hmm. you also have a lot more people who have a camera um, yeah for sure people who can do like amazing photography with just their phone i know there were like photo agencies uh, a few years ago that were set up with just like uh people who were like popular iphone photographers Right, you know, that yeah, were like yeah. representing, and, and then they do like incredibly amazing work, and like they didn't buy a camera until like I don't know, five years into their career or something, and they still take amazing photos. <laughs> but um, yeah, you will see stuff like that, and those people will also get campaigns. Um, so it's it's like definitely a lot more competition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's you, really how you can. Do you think it's more competition now than than let's say when you were photography? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I mean. Look, when I was starting, like, I mean, I mean, the what was, what set me apart is, you know, because I have this painterly approach to my work, and, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Um, I I don't socialize a lot, I don't go to parties, so I I don't do all the things that you really should do if you want to survive in fashion. So if I started like photography like today, and I have this personality <laughs> that, that being so like antisocial and you know like just just really quiet, like. I, I I would probably not be where I am. <laughs> I mean, honestly, because like once you get to a certain point, it snowballs, right? Yes. So I pretty much reached reached the top when I was in Singapore in in two years. You know, I held a solo exhibition at um like uh Japan Creative Center that's like supported by the Japanese embassy. Um, I I mm. self published my photo book. I shot for like Mercedes Benz and like uh, Mont Blanc and Lancome, and like I, I did all these clients and things so it becomes easier for people to just come to me and give me work right but yeah. but if but if it's now um and i don't want to socialize i don't want to meet editors who are going to give me this opportunity then mm. <laughs> say bye to photography i see your point yeah i think i think yeah. right now with with the advent of social media because like both me and you when we mm. when we uh became the part of quote-unquote industry social media was was just either starting or wasn't even there um, yeah it wasn't i mean deviant art was the social media for artists that was right. the only thing but it was yeah. so selective like you could argue that uh forums back then were only for um. people that were really interested in the subject you know so mm. in terms of how many people like if the forum had like twenty thousand uh subscriber like people subscribed uh, or mm-hmm. uh, uh registered that was a big mm-hmm. forum you know that wasn't yeah. that wasn't like a like something to sneeze at. You know. Yeah. Um, no. Now, if you if if someone has twenty thousand followers, like oh yeah, you're doing okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, but forum is like that's almost twenty thousand people. Like half of those people are probably participating. But you know, twenty thousand right. followers. No one's gonna tell you how to improve your work. You're exactly. not, like I think it's yeah. so much harder to make, especially when you have more than like a thousand followers. I feel like it gets so hard to make personal like personal relationship or like connections with, with people because everyone is just gonna be like oh cool stuff like yeah exactly like I, on forums you're gonna actually get um uh like some feedback and now it's like yeah oh, it's cool. or you know what drives me yeah. up the wall it's like when, when you post something and someone says like oh it looks like x y and z and that will be like a <laughs> reference to like marvel movie or something you know like oh you motherfucker <laughs> it's just like <laughs> Like, why would you post that? You know, it just drives me crazy. Because uh, it's like when you you do an original work and someone automatically attributes it to someone to something that just became popular more recently. You know? Yeah, uh, I know. 
It's great. I, um, I, to- I don't yeah, blame people like, for that, but it's like, but you know, you know I mean. like just, uh, you know, I totally understand what you mean. Like sometimes <laughs> we, I do my fantasy looking stuff. And if I have a, a almost white hair girl and they're like, oh my God, that's like Daenerys. I'm like, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like, Daenerys we're looking was at references like from my, 20 from the years looks older. Of my photos? Yeah. That <laughs> yeah, happens like, a lot, though. Yeah, read some Elric, will you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it's hard. just the attention span, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, um, but it's, it's cool when you meet people who get it, right? Like, uh, right. I was at. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is this is totally tooting my own horn. Uh, <laughs> when I was at, like, East and like uh i saw Pro- uh, brahms booth and then like you know i got one of his prints and then i gave him my card and then he's like oh i i have this photo like in my little like you know reference <laughs> <laughs> kit i was like oh shit and then like you know we know what you're talking about right like older fantasy mm-hmm. stuff and it's just it's just so hard to have this type of connections and talk on, on social media these days i feel like with most people on a superficial level just because everyone yeah, is just, it's all by numbers they like, right they, now they like something and then they say mm. cool work and, and that's it um it feels like feel social like... media is more how many likes and subscribers you have versus you know yeah actually having meaningful connections yeah you know, i mean it really has become a component mm-hmm. for for people to to get work as part of their brand so i really understand the need to do that right absolutely but, um but i really miss the days where you know hanging out on like a forum lounge will make you friends like Mm -hmm. going on like a private forum with like 200 people and you will get to know these really amazing guys and uh, i don't know are there still things like these around (laughs) then i don't know barely you know i remember some like smaller forums like even a couple of years ago but they all kind of like died off um it's right now it's just i guess social media is the king of, of everything but like even though it's called social media, like there's there's literally nothing social about it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, well, yeah, when I was in Seattle, I met up with some of the guys that I knew from like 15 years ago, right? Or people who were yeah. working on CG Hub together, like back in the day in the beginning. And it's just crazy that these are the people that we can still talk to when it mm-hmm. all comes back to it. Like none of the people I follow all follow me. Like we follow each other. I yeah. guess to certain level, you know, you might connect with someone. And then it the the, the, but the percentage of it is so small. I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you get just so much more volume of everything coming in your way. Yeah. It's really hard to filter and actually have meaningful conversation with someone. Yeah. It's it's really so difficult. So I actually like Twitter a lot because of that. Mm-hmm. Much more than like Instagram and Facebook, just because it's easy to jump on to a conversation mm-hmm. a little bit like a back in the forum days, and then people can sort of get to know each other that way. And I got to meet a lot of cool Japanese artists uh, like that. Oh, nice. Um, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do so you I got to visit with like Twitter? I always find it awkward. I don't know. It's uh, maybe I'm following the wrong people. I actually unfollow everyone. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really love I met so many cool people on Twitter. Like I, I, I followed this artist who did like oil painting studies and his work is so amazing. And then we're like, I was going to Tokyo and I was like, hey, want to meet up? And sure. And I was sending his blog mm. to my roommate who was traveling with me and and then I put it through Google Translate and I was like, um, did you like, do you like Gundam? Like, because I saw that on your blog because I love Gundam, right? Right. Uh, it's Japanese giant robot anime. And, and then mm. he's like, yeah, like, I did a poster for that show. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse you the artist for like Gundam Unicorn? What? Like, I just like went crazy. And we got a meet up. So he brought me to Sunrise, the studio that did it. And I met a creator nice. of Gundam. Oh, um, so like a, a few of these kind of like opportunities just like randomly people are just like their illustrations um, mm-hmm. and you just never know what people work on especially in japan because they can't post like their official work most of the time um so so it, it's like <laughs> i don't know it's kinder surprise <laughs> yeah. You, yeah you just meet someone you like and they're like oh yeah i work at like koshima production and <laughs> what <laughs> yeah it's yeah, great so, i remember ash was telling me something similar where he would just connect with like random people on on, on Twitter, and mm. uh, it would just turn out that you know they they were like fan of his work and th- like some yeah. of them worked on Acura or, or like uh, you know yeah Apple seeds. It's like, oh, crazy oh, and and crazy. they're so friendly and and you can learn so mm. much. Um, and I really enjoyed that. Yeah, so, I guess yeah, that's Twitter Japanese is culture. They're yeah, super Twitter is friendly. great. Um, yeah, Twitter is great. Yeah, but I'm yeah, a, I'm, most I'm, artists. I'm, I have to try. I have to. I have to be more pro. pro proactive i guess uh yeah. when it comes to that because um you know i started unfollowing a lot of people because like i i mm. guess it just uh, it's just it's, 
it's related a little bit to politics in in in, in mm. the u.s and right, it's just yeah. become so toxic i just cannot t- like i don't like talking about politics i, ju- I just don't to- don't tolerate that at it's all it's exhausting in my life. it's like it's just a, such a waste of time you know uh i get it, you get it i guess like to me to me the 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 the, the solution is simple hey if you want to change something go vote that's it like i don't need to hear anything more <laughs> Uh, and because uh, I cannot vote in this country, I literally don't mm-hmm. care. You know? <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, yeah, can get crazy. Yeah, I, I, I don't even want to read it anymore. It's just yeah, like so well, depressing. Yeah. It's, it's exhausting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, decided to take a sabbatical year, and it's like I haven't been checking social media like for like three, four months now. And it's like I mean, occasionally I'm on it to like you know look mm-hmm. at like some stuff, but. Yeah, it just feels so good, good. To like unplug, for sure it feels very nice <laughs> yeah it's like it's just so much noise unnecessary noise yeah. look uh we could talk forever i could i could just talk forever but uh we're gonna need to wrap this up i i really wish mm-hmm. uh we could talk a little more about gear <laughs> uh but i want to <laughs> do it on a separate episode maybe maybe like uh we could we, we could schedule another one uh sometime in the near future and because i'm yeah, really you right. know I, I i started dabbling a little bit into that medium format you mm-hmm. know <laughs> you know what mm. i mean exciting and exciting yeah and you are you are yes. doing a lot of medium format photography so i'm, I'm really curious uh mm. on like on, on a little more technical level um you know what what's your thoughts on this are uh, it just looks better <laughs> Yeah, that's, well, yeah, that's all my thoughts. All my thoughts. <laughs> okay, we're well done. <laughs> I don't think uh, we need to talk more. No, that's that's perfect. Uh, cool. Do you, um, it was it was uh awesome to talk with you. And you know, we we've been talking uh often uh, on and off on social media, and and uh, yeah, and you know, we met a couple times. Well, one one time <laughs> when you were in, in in, and it appears that it was actually three years ago. <laughs> um. <laughs> But yeah, I would love to have you back uh, to, you know, f- almost do like a follow up uh, on this, especially like on more technical, you know, what li- less historical, more technical level. That would be, yeah. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Uh, sure. That sounds great. Awesome. That was fantastic. Th- thanks for thanks for joining this. Uh, oh, Nina. thanks for inviting me. I'm, yep. Like, I was super excited. <laughs> Hey, look, uh, like anytime you, you're like, oh, you know what? I would love to do a podcast for just to catch up. Just just hit me up. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. When, when I have uh, some cool things to share. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. No, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's wrap it up here. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, um, th- anyone who is listening to this uh, awesome episode. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for <laughs> thanks for listening it all. And uh, I'll, I'll catch you guys next time. Big kisses. Thank you. Mm-hmm.